Buffalo Sabres, the team we have projected at seventh, uh, obviously made the big splash with Taylor Hall. So, Ryan, what do you like about the Sabres this year? Well, I mean, they had a pretty exciting offseason. And, you know, it, they're kind of, it's tough that they're in this division, but at least they have some firepower for Jack Eichel. And it, it really all starts with Jack Eichel. I mean, clearly this is a competitive guy who wants to be in the mix for a playoff spot. He wants to be in the playoffs. And, and now he's got more guys to play with. You know, Taylor Hall, obviously the marquee acquisition, but, you know, I'm expecting a big comeback from Jeff Skinner. I, I think last year was a, a bit of an, an aberration. I mean, he's had off seasons before, but, but nothing like, like last year. I think he's closer to that 30, 35 goal guy uh, than we saw. And, you know, frankly, you know, Rasmus Dahlin is going to be even better on the blue line. And that gives them quite the weapon there. So this is a team that it's growing. Um, I think that they kind of got hurt a little bit by the divisional realignment for this part. But having said that, they're going to have all the motivation in the world. And I think Jack Eichel is, you know, he's, he's one of the, the best centers in the NHL. And I think he's going to prove it. Yeah, I like this team down the middle, obviously, with, um, you know, with Jack Eichel, uh, Mar uh, Eric Stahl and Cody Eakin, uh, you know, and, and let's not forget Dylan Cousins, uh, who, uh, depending on what happens tonight, uh, could have a gold medal around his neck by the time the season starts, um, you know, will be joining this group as well, probably as a winger, worked in as the wing, but, you know, I could see him, you know, if, 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 uh, if projections are, are, are to be realized here, I could see him, you know, maybe transitioning to center and moving up the depth chart to, as a centerman. Uh, I'm not sure if he's more of a winger at the NHL level or a center, but he's going to be a good player. I think we know that he's going to be a real power forward and, and, a, and a guy to be contended with. You know, I, I think obviously, you know, the Taylor Hall, Jack Eichel, Sam Reinhardt line has, has the potential to be one of the most dynamic lines in the league. You know, and, and you mentioned the defense core, Ryan. Right? I think, you know, they're another year older. They're another year better. They're another year stronger. Um, you know, they, they're good. They're mobile. Um, you know, they can create offense, uh, both in terms of putting up points. And I think just as importantly, getting that puck up to those talented forwards to, to help them, give them a chance to do something in the offensive zone. For sure. And, and you know, as much as there was some criticism when Kevin Adams got hired as GM, you know, uh, by the Pagulas and there was some, you know, talk that they were bringing in a yes man after getting rid of Jason Botterill. I do think you have to give Adams credit for recognizing the single, the single, I think, number one reason for Botterill's downfall, which was the Ryan O'Reilly trade. He gutted the team up the middle. I've said this so many times, but I have to say it one more time in this context. He bet too big on Casey Middlestat being ready and the whole team just crumbled because of the problem up the middle. And what did Adams do? He completely reversed that, like you said, Adams or, or uh, Eric Stahl and, and Cody Eakin. And now Dylan Cousins, if Dylan Cousins ends up on that second line, eventually as the number one, uh, number two center with guys like Skinner and Reinhardt on his wings, it's because Cousins has earned his way there and is actually ready, unlike Middlestat, who was handed the role. So I think he's completely rectified that problem Kevin Adams has. And I think at least on the decor, you see, like you said, Ryan Madalene, but also Henry Yoki Haru, you see potential for further growth from these guys. So there is a lot of ceiling, I think, baked into that defense core. In terms of dislikes, you know, it's funny. I, I see the ceiling in the decor, but I don't see a true reliable shutdown guy. I mean, obviously, Rasmus Dahlin is going to be that, but behind him, uh, I just, it's almost like, you know, you don't want too many veterans, but I feel like the Sabres are missing the equivalent of like a Shea Weber type in that group, someone who has been around the block, who is a leader, who can play a shutdown role. And I don't see that uh, in the Sabres decor. And also the goaltending is just, it's a shrug emoji for me with Linus Allmark and, and Carter Hutton, obviously Uko Pekka Lukanen coming down the pipeline is the long-term answer you hope, uh, but I don't think it's, it's overly exciting what they have in there right now. So I still think this is a team that's gonna give up a lot of goals. And Taylor Hall, exciting, absolutely, especially because I think Jack Eichel, I think he's ready for, you know, a heart trophy level season, but we know that Hall obviously is still very injury prone. And if you remove Hall from the equation, things are a lot less exciting. So I still see overall more downside than upside. Uh, Ryan, what about you? What do you, what do you not like about the Sabres team right now? I'm still concerned about the goaltending. I thought 
Last year was a very good opportunity for Carter Hutton to show that he could be the guy for this Sabres team. And it didn't really work out that way. And, and maybe part of it was, you know, the, the players in front of him, but he's, he's still got to prove that. And, and Linus Allmark is, you know, he's, he's behind him. Um, so I, I don't think they're really strong there and they're going to face some pretty good shooters in this division. So that's problematic. And yeah, I agree. I, I don't think they have the team defense to make up for that right now, which is why we, we have them kind of in the, the lower tier of this division. That, that would be my concern. And, and as you, you know, referenced Uko Pekka Luokanen, you know, he is the future in net for Buffalo, but you know, the future is not here yet. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go three for three on the goaltending. I'm concerned about that, too. It's it's probably below average by NHL standards. Um, the penalty kill was really bad last year also, um, which doesn't augur well for goals against. Although, you know, you, you would think that that uh, that Eric Stahl and, and even a guy like Tobias Reeder, that, who they picked up in the offseason, will help with that. Um, one of the things that I worry about on this team is, uh, is and, you, and you touched on it, Matt, with the, with the veteran presence, you know, not a lot of winners on this team, not a lot of guys who can show the way. And the thing that concerns me about Buffalo historically over the last couple of years is because they're, they're young and, and that, I think they, they seem to get caught up in momentum, both positive and negative momentum. You know, yeah. like we see them get out of the gate, you know, the last couple of years, they were so good out of the gate and then they, they hit a bit of a rough patch and then it's just down the sinkhole after that. And, and I think that's incumbent on a guy like Jack Eichel to, to really step up the maturity level of his game. I think he's got to be a guy that, you know, when they hit those rough patches, um, you know, he can't be walking around with the big lip and you, you, we've all seen that. We've all seen that as, as the years have gone on and, and, you know, it's, it's all great and roses when they start. And then when they hit that patch and things go downhill, you can just tell in Eichel's body language and out and out what he says that he's not really happy with the way things are going. I think it's incumbent upon him to, you know, to, I guess I'm going to say man up a little bit here and, and, you know, so show some maturity and maybe show the way when those things start to happen. And I, and I do think Ralph Kruger is the kind of guy, the coach Ralph Kruger is the kind of guy you know, that can engender that kind of thing in this group if he has the time to be able to do it. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Uh, and if you're summarizing the Sabres, what do you say, Ryan? How do you describe this team to that clearly passionate Sabres fan out there? If I'm at a Batavia wedding, I am saying, I don't know if Uko Pekaluokanen has been to Lockport Gambino Ford yet, but he is going to be a great netminder. Can I have that parmed? <laughs> no, what I would say is, uh, you know, it sucks to be in this division, bro. <laughs> Your team's getting better, but uh, this is a this is a this is a biatch of a division. <laughs> I'd say uh, just just sit down with your beef on Weck and enjoy the enjoy the Bills right now. They might be going to the Super Bowl. Sabers will have their time, but it's not yet. Not in this division. 